In this episode, Lieutenant Dan rescues us a new Kerbal, I use the transfer window planner to send my probes to Duna, and the newest module heads up to Kerbin Station. All of this and more is coming up right now. Hello everyone and welcome. This is a momentous day. First, let's get this guy off the runway. Oh, my new runway. I've upgraded to the Tier 2 runway mostly because there really wasn't a reason for it. I was just kind of tired of the old runway. But as I was saying, today is a momentous day. We're going to be launching our first interplanetary craft. But before we get to that, uh, we do have a contract to rescue somebody. And in fact, let's lower our thrust quite a lot. We are picking too much speed up here. Uh, let's see if we can do this through Waypoint Manager, Mayday Search Area, yes, I just gotta select that Waypoint. There's our Waypoint. <laughs> okay. This is a contract I've been waiting for a while, it's the whole reason why I've got Lieutenant ba Dan back down to the surface. We have a seaplane, which we haven't flown in quite some time. Uh, in fact, you can see there's not even a Kerbal Engineer chip on it. There is uh, no lights, blink you, or any of that kind of stuff. So we'll have to re-kit this thing out. These are contracts that come from uh, the contract pack giving aircraft purpose. And it's sort of like part of that contract pack are these Coast Guard contracts where you've got to rescue Kerbals. And this is one of the ways. There's actually some other ways that are in there too. But I can't rescue them from orbit the stock way. That's been removed, but this is my way of rescuing Kerbals, and I much, much prefer it. So I gotta get out to this search area, find me a Kerbal, and I am in desperate need of Kerbals. Now that we got a permanent Kerbal presence in space and Kerbals going into space all the time, uh, I've been finding myself really sort of, that's my limiting factor sometimes with my launches, is, is just being able to find a Kerbal to get in said rocket. The one thing about these contracts is once you accept them, you have to complete them within a day, or I am I'm assuming the person you're rescuing, what is, it's Colonel Themon Kerman. I would assume Colonel Themon would actually be dead, if <laughs> it's the way I assume it would work, if it takes you more than a day to go out there. So I have to make sure that the plane is sitting in the hangar, ready to go, doesn't need to be built. Once we recover this thing, I think I'll rebuild it a little bit, put some lights on it and stuff, but I mean, it's all right, I suppose. The other thing I've done in the meantime since the last episode is I turned up the ambient light 10%, so I'm hoping that will help. I find when I play, I typically don't do it because it makes everything looks a little flatter to me, but I think in the videos it does definitely look better. And we will be getting to our interplanetary mission, our Duna probe. Duna 1 is sitting on the pad, ready to go. So we're going to fire that thing off. We're going to talk about how to use the window transfer planner to set up your parking orbit and uh, your ejection burn and all that kind of stuff because it does come with a number of tools to help out with that. There's another type of contract where you got to rescue climbers from the mountains and then they join your ranks as well. Uh, it's a tougher one, but you get two instead of one. So I guess that's sort of the payoff. I am still working on getting that VTOL to work in a dependable way again. I keep getting ideas on what I want to do with it. And then I get distracted with doing other things, but... I don't know, we'll see. I can't make any promises. <laughs> one of the things I am re lacking is decent reaction wheels. It's that's And that's typically what you use to keep it under some sort of control. Ah! We have found Colonel Themon! He is still alive, but we have way... Let's see, we can stall this a little bit. Whoa, we'll probably have to do a little loopy loop. You know what, we'll go by him, do a turn around, and then come back and get him. I do like this more than the rescuing them from orbit. As much as I enjoy orbit rendezvous and stuff like that. Whoa, gear. I'm gonna run them over. No, look out! Ah, no, no! Oh, this is a bad rescue! <laughs> Rule 
one of rescues. Don't run over your Kerbal you're trying to rescue. Okay, Colonel Themon Kerman. Whoop. What kind of Kerbal are... Oh, let's get you out from under the roof. <laughs> the wing right on top of you, pushing you under the water. Let's remove his helmet. And his uh, ne neck ring. Let's take a look at him. Oh, there he is. Handsome fellow. What are... You're a pilot guy! I got too many pilots! I need engineers and scientists. Why do you have to be a pilot? Oh, well. We'll get you aboard, I suppose. I do have the propellers and rotors now installed, or unlocked. So potentially, I suppose, I could build myself a helicopter, though I don't think they're the easiest things in the world to build, and I've yet to really play with any of that stuff at all. I have no idea exactly how easy or hard it would be, but a helicopter might be a better thing than this. You know, a helicopter with pontoons and landing gear could do both go up to the mountains and come down to here. Of course, you need something that would be easy to fly, too, given who the person is that's flying it. Alright, and we're going to just recover the old-fashioned way because the construction time recovery just messes this whole contract up as I've discovered rather explosively <laughs> in the past but with that done let's start talking about getting to Duna why don't we start off by taking a look at Kerbal alarm clock because here's the window that I set for myself it's three days and four hours away but clearly it's kind of out of date we're gonna we're gonna launch right now so why don't we put in one for right now so we're going to again open up window transfer planner we're gonna go again to Duna and we'll just plot a fresh one here oh it's picking this one way off into the future so let's not do that because I don't want I want to launch right now so there we go we should be picking one that's right now let's see departure is 275 zero, zero, zero. I don't know is that now let's add the alarm see what we get add that alarm okay we're gonna close the details there should be an alarm there Duna plus four we're four days past it oh why is that so hard for it to do that oh, well. what day is it right let's take a look at this it's 275 let's try this again okay um it was four days wrong so let's add four days two seven nine Lot it. Well, that's the wrong one I added to. <laughs> Two, seven, nine, plot it. Uh, and now add KCT alarm. Okay, well, how's that one faring? That is two hours in the past. You know what? That's that's freaking close enough. But what we're going to do is I want to, yeah, let's go to map view and I'll show you this. Some of the other features that are built into window trans so if I click on the actual alarm I get all kinds of details here and the one I want to think about right now are these guys here we have our phase angle our ejection angle our ejection inclination and then our Delta V that is what it is but the first three here I want to talk about just a little bit and the aids that this thing gives you so for instance down here notice that there's buttons here show phase angle so if we show the phase angle there we are. Uh, it is showing. Let's go back here. What we want now? Our phase angle is supposed to be twenty forty nine. So the green one is the one we want. Uh, the blue one is the one we got. It's measuring the current phase angle. And if you don't know what phase angle is, all it is is what's the if you draw a line as this diagram kind of clearly shows from where you are. To the sun or whatever it is that you're orbiting and then draw a line to your target the phase angle is just the angle that this makes that's all it is um, unfortunately yeah this this alarm is in the past oh well whatever that's why it's a little bit different you know it's close enough but what I really want to take a look at is this one the ejection angle we'll zoom in here this one's great in fact I love the animation for you showing it here let's just 
Woo, there we go. So our ejection angle is 193.05 degrees from prograde. And this shows you exactly what that means in case you're having difficulty. So this arrow here is Kerbin's path in its orbit. And if you're ever, without this animation, if you need to know what's Kerbin's path in the orbit, all you have to do is look at the terminator line between the daylight and the night and uh, remember which way around Kerbin goes in its orbit, that, you know, is the direction it's going because it's always going to be perpendicular to the sun. So what it's telling you is we want to start our burn, our, you know, we're going to put ourselves into a parking orbit, but our burn's going to be right here and we're going to shoot off in this direction. So that's really very, very helpful for us. The other thing I want to draw attention to that this diagram is not showing us is our ejection inclination of 0.76 degrees. Now, admittedly, that is pretty small, but why don't we take, why don't we use it anyway? Um, for Duna, it's probably not a big deal if I do or I don't, but what this is telling you is as you eject out of Kerbin's SOI, you, need, you would want to be in an inclination, the sort of your trajectory to be 0 0.076 degrees above uh, equatorial, which for a reference, here's Kerbin Station here. So we want to be going in this direction. This is the direction we want to go, but we want to be tilted upwards at 0.76 degrees. It's positive, which means towards the north. That means we want our to actually have our parking orbit to be inclined so down here we're towards the south. So as we go off in this direction, we go off towards the north. You're going to want to launch at either the ascending node, which would be around here, we're coming very, very close to that, or the descending node, which will be there. And those ascending and descending nodes are always 90 degrees to this line. And we'll just kind of eyeball it. Does it give us any kind of latitudes and long it doesn't so you know what that's cool <laughs> if, if you could get an actual latitude or longitude that would be great so what we're gonna do is we're just going to time warp ourselves so you probably watch it from here would be best we can now close all these alarm actually yeah we'll keep this ejection angle up there we're gonna time warp ourselves just eyeballing it so that we are 90 degrees to our ejection angle Pretty neat little tools to kind of help you out with all of this stuff. That's probably pretty close. What do you think? Let's set up our KOS script. You know, and none of this is uber duber critical, but it's nice. The, the sort of more of that you can do, more efficient and easier it will be for you to set up your ejection burn. Anyway, let's launch this thing. are off and very familiar booster this is the reliant 1-r 2x2 or something like that it's a reliant engine in the middle and then four thumper boosters stage two of them now two of them this way and then the reliant for the third stage uh, familiar looking booster because it is the booster that lifts up the p1b which is a common vessel I've used to get people up to Kerbin Station of late. In fact, the last time I used this booster, it induced itself a little bit of a wobble, and we had to abort the program. Um, it was a viewer that noticed what the problem was. I had SAS on, so SAS was fighting with KOS for control of it, and that's why we got this wobble. And now that I made sure SAS was off, uh, now not doing that and I think the reason I ended up turning on SAS on by mistake is because I was typing the word switch to zero to get to the drive that has this launch program on it and I didn't have this window selected and you know when I hit the T on switch I think I put on the SAS all right there goes that now did I have the foresight to put any lights on this thing probably not oh yeah I got the green from the probe cores and that's it so some stuff deploying I didn't have all the solar panels deployed there are my two um, what are they the Communitron DTS dash M ones um, in order for those guys actually to work at Duna 
They, um, I do need to get a tier 3 tracking station, but I don't need to have it now, so they should be fine for the immediate future. There we go. Very happy with that orbit. Let's switch our control point back. I don't know if it was on this one to begin with, but we're going to switch our control point to here. Program is ended. Okay, this is all rare. It seems to be all in good shape, so let's set up our transfer. Okay, let's take off Kerbin Station, which seems to be just kind of in the way, more or less. We will add a maneuver here. And according to, let's bring up alarm clock here. According to alarm clock, according to the details, this burn should be ejection delta V 1178. So let's do that. So 1178. I don't know how'd that do. I'm sure it's not hitting Duna. I would I will be absolutely <laughs> flabbergasted if that happens. Where are we here? Are we getting even coming close to Duna? No. Oh wait, we haven't set Duna as a target either. Let's set Duna as a target. Oh, that ain't bad. <laughs> uh, that's pretty good. We're just kind of putting that in. Uh, let's take this and we will tweak it back and forth. And see if we cannot close in. So right now our closest approach is 207,000 kilometers. So we'll just, if we go forward, oh, that makes it worse. We go backwards, though. That gets smaller. And boom, there is our encounter see how much easier all this stuff makes it all that fooling around and this is focusing on duna here and the inclination even though the small inclination notice how like pretty close we are not bad anyway to the equatorial plane of duna oh that just made it worse this way this way oh well there that's pretty decent there look at that I mean, look how we'd hardly have to do, we'll do a tiny little adjustment at some point, but geez louise, that ain't bad, is it? Um, should I tweak the prograde or just kind of live with it? Maybe, maybe like that? Sure. What, what, one more? No. Right there. That's the least amount of time I ever did setting up an ejection, that's for sure, to another planet. And this is a 1 minute and 47 second burn, which is not bad for an ejection burn. Sometimes these ejection burns, depending on where you're going and the thrust to weight ratio of your vessel, uh, can be pretty long. And that's why it's kind of nice to put yourself into a little bit of a higher orbit. So that I've done the ones where you burn from a very low orbit. And next thing you know, you're starting to dip into the atmosphere pit, which is clearly not the best. We do have one object that is in orbit about the sun that I have since lost communications with. This will be the first object to go much further than that and still hopefully retain its communications. By the way, with the DTSM-1, I will recommend that if you are doing a Duna Pro, pick better antennas than these ones. These are just the best ones I've got unlocked right now. But um, when Duna and Kerbin are at their furthest separation. I won't have a signal, even with a tier 3 tracking station. So, these aren't the best. <laughs> but, when we get to Duna, uh, we won't be at our furthest separation from Kerbin. They should be serviceable. I hope. <laughs> we'll keep our fingers crossed. Oh, oh, that little doobly doo just meant we just left Kerbin's sphere of influence, or at least our Applewapsis did. Let's take a look to see how this is doing. So, that's from Duna's view. Where's our trajectory? I don't see what's going on right now. Okay, it just ended the burn. How did we do? Oh, that ain't bad. I can't complain about that. We undercooked just a little bit, didn't we? So let's see here. Let's uh, turn down the thrust. Let's 
see if we can not get that periapsis as really close as close as we can to doing this. So here we'll zoom in a bit. Okay, let's see. I think I just need to burn a bit more. No, I overcooked it. Oh my gosh. Okay, uh, retrograde. I mean, this is a minor thing. I could definitely, I will definitely be doing a mid-course correction. But this is, I think, the best place to do this. I'll get this around the retrograde vector. There we go. Ah, get this in as close right now. a little bit more all right that's good enough everything else we'll deal with it with a uh, correction burn once we are outside of Kerbin's sphere of influence uh, our exposure for our solar panels looks very very good so that shouldn't be an issue a communication shouldn't be an issue well, this thing should be off. So what we'll do is we'll set ourselves an alarm for when we will be crossing out of Kerbin's sphere of influence. That's going to be in just under three days. But otherwise, we'll move on. And yeah, this has no juice. <laughs> Shoot. Because yeah, I... Okay, because I recovered it last time. We are going to do that Weasley mission again. The one I tried a couple of episodes ago where we go around and do surface samples and I was going to store them in here. And this thing has no electric charge because I don't know why it has no electric charge now I think about it, but regardless, it has no electric charge. So I cannot do anything with it. So I guess we will time warp to the sun. Let's just make sure. Is there anything? In okay, this is wrong. That needs to go up. Seaplane first. Uh, and everything here is being built. I guess there's nothing. Okay, no harm. Okay, so we'll go to sunrise. <sighs> Why does everything have to be so hard? Warning, reaction wheel malfunction on Kerbin Station. We lost. Okay, wait, 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 wait. One thing at a time here. Okay, we have a reaction wheel malfunction on Kerbin Station. Let's go... Okay, let's check that out first. So, we can get there from here. Uh, Kerbin Station, Kerbin Station... Right, can I just click, go to vessel? Go. That's a food container. Nope, they are reaction wheels. There's my malfunction. Okay, okay. So, there are reaction wheels in here. Alright, so that... Okay, let's get bill out and see if he can not do something about this I have no idea it's not critical so this is a, a malfunction thrown in by Kerbalism and I have absolutely no idea repair Reaction wheels repaired. We're back in business. Good job, Bill. Well, that was easy. So, and I noticed there was an inspect inspect reaction wheels. It's practically new. All right, that was easy. You know that malfunction we just had just had me thinking. One of the things you have the ability to do is to upgrade the quality of parts with a little bit more money and a little bit more mass. I think too. You can increase the quality of a part from standard to high, which reduces its chances of a malfunction. I've really not been thinking too much about those kind of things because my missions have been, for the most part, pretty short, matter of days, not months. But we just sent a pile of stuff on its way to Duna, and I know for a fact I didn't change any of that to high quality. I certainly hope that's not a decision that will come to haunt me. But in the meantime, we'll park this off again to the side. And we'll get out the Weasley M1. And take off. 543 and go. 
and we are off. You might know, be noticing as well that I've upgraded the runway. It actually was completely unnecessary. I did it because I was just tired of that uh, gravel dirt runway. And you can see our pilot is Valentina and literally she is the only Kerbal I have available. So it's Valentina because it has to be Valentina. And where we are going is to the Highlands. And, or not the Highlands, I'm sorry. We've been to the Highlands, of course. We are going to the Badlands. And I know that there are Badlands in this kind of zone in around here. Let's see if I can drop a waypoint down there. There's an add waypoint feature. Uh, set a location on map, and then you could just go, I don't know, about there somewhere. Uh, we'll see how that goes. I'm going to call that what it says. It says site. What does it say? And it, is that active? Activate navigation. So that's site with a bunch of letters. I like that it's around. We'll, we'll, we'll delete that once we're done. Two point landed northern ice shelf completed. Is there stuff still in here? Science data. There is! <laughs> Remember I recovered this thing? That's why it was all incomplete. Okay. I recovered this thing normal. Oh, I just recovered it, recovered it. So this science still has to be transmitted. Oh, that's funny. I recovered it and all that science was still stored in here. Urban flying low radiation skin. This might be old. Landed at the ton. I don't know. I'm very confused. Flying low at the tundra. Well, that's. I, I'm so confused on how this works. Because I recovered this plane normally. And we have still a Highlands. Landed on the Highlands. Okay. That is weird. I didn't show it in the video a couple of episodes ago, but I did go back into the research and development, looked at the archives, and noticed some of the science wasn't complete, and I was very confused by that. I'm still actually really rather confused by that. Okay. <laughs> we'll get this to work one day. All right. Badlands. Looking forward to Badlands. There has got to be bad land somewhere in around here. So it feels like there's a texture change this way. Ah! 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 Okay, okay. Here we go. I was about to say if this didn't happen soon, I was going to have to bail on this mission. And fly Valentina back. But let's, let's try and just go around circles here a bit. As soon as these are done, we can land it's that bloody barometer it takes forever. Alright, what do we got? Oh, whoa, 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 barometer's done. Okay, it's all done. <laughs> okay, okay, we, we, uh, oh, these are back, uh, grass, okay, let's turn around. We just popped into grasslands. I wish it was more distinctive, the change in the topography or textures, whoa, or something between grasslands and or where the where the badlands start. I always find this like such such a teeny tiny it's like it's purposely designed to be just this pain in the back end biome. Ah, 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 there it is, there it is, alright. So we are now collecting everything. We are okay, Valentina. Get you out here. And we're going to do a surface sample and an EVA report. And once that's done collecting, and of course we've collected all the rest of our science, it's time to get ourselves out of here. I mean, we could transmit this on the way home. But oh my gosh, these missions take so long, it really is questionable. It's only the completionist in me that really has me doing this. 
go this way. We're gonna park right beside our mobile sample store. And then Valentina's gonna go out. We're gonna see if we can transfer those surface samples over. That's what this is about. I've never done this before, so I'm not 100% sure this works. But I do think it's worth a try. Alright, that's good enough. Break. Alright, Valentina, you're gonna get out. And I think one of the samples actually is in here. She can only carry one at a time. Take the data. Okay. Let go. Now, is that now stored in her? She has one slot of stuff. Oh, it's up here. See? Kerbin landed in the Highlands. That's the one I've had forever. Alright, she's gonna have to jump. I never put a ladder on this thing. We should maybe think about that. Because <laughs> I've never really had a reason for a Kerbal to get off of it and run around. Okay, we are going to go to here. And we're going to transfer the data to there. Okay, it must have gone. Okay, going back. Now the other one. Oh, I hope she can reach. I should have done this one first. I just realized that. Oh, dearie, dear. Oh, I can get it from this far. <laughs> okay, so now she has the other one, the Badlands one. We'll run that over here. And we shall transfer data. Okay, so now if I go to Little Rover, it is in there. So what I should be able to do now is just flat out recover the rover. He says with such confidence. All right, so we recovered all those parts, but what? Oh, I was hoping to see some science there. That concerns me. So if I go now to archives and look at surface landed surface samples. I got 10 reports. Okay, what am I doing wrong? They're not here. See, Highlands isn't here and Badlands isn't here. Why? What on earth am I doing wrong? Okay, Valentina, let's get the Valentina. I don't. I am puzzleified. We don't have any science here. All right, I I am so confused. So where did that science go? That is the question, but that's going to have to wait for later. We've got other things to do. And we are off with our next module for Kerbin Station. <laughs> Lighting up the ground exceedingly brightly. I did, I put a lot of lights on this. I also stuck around somewhere some lights that are the red and the green that Bob can use to kind of, use to kind of color up Kerbin Station. Uh, you can see that it's built around again the hitchhiker can. So it'll be a lot more residence for our Kerbals. And in fact, it has an experiment associated with it called the Float Experiment. Uh, I believe that does sound for something clever, but it's not that clever. But you can see it requires crew, which is not too surprising, but it actually requires four crew. And right now, I only have two people up in Kerbin Station, so we need to get some more people up. So sitting in, here, I'll bring up Kerbal Construction Time, sitting on the launch we can start rolling it out in fact but we have the palm one that can bring up three more kerbals and if only I had kerbals to bring up that would be great because every single one of my kerbals well I got two in space everybody else is on vacation uh, so we'll have to get a couple up there but I look at alarm clock here uh, Jeb, Madby and Bob are just uh, a little over an hour and a half away from being ready for duty Madby has to be part of that moon mission, but maybe Jeb and Bob can go up to Kerbin Station. Well, that will be the plan anyway. Hey, anyway, as for the booster, this is technically a new booster, though you've seen it a number. In fact, you saw something very similar to this last episode with P2C. This is the Kodiak 1-R. 
Uh, these are the swivels. So RS2 was the one you would have seen earlier. This is the RS3 with three radial liquid boosters on it. Uh, it's otherwise exactly the same lifter, except I just put three-way symmetry so that, you know, if this thing's a little bit heavier. And the float experiment, by the way, takes a lot of electricity. So there is a lot of solar panels associated with this. I think I have six of those deployable one by six solar panels and a ton of batteries so that the experiment can continue on through the night. Hopefully I did all my math correctly and uh, it'll all work out. But we're not gonna find out till next episode because I think Palm, the Palm One will go up next episode. We'll, we'll crew this up and see how the float works. Get up here to fairing separation again. Should be a familiar trick by now. Uh, upside down 1.25 meter fairing on the top and boom there we go there goes everything that perfectly so now you can start to see oh actually there's going to be some deployables happening here in a moment too there goes that again my favorite uh deployable <laughs> from universal storage there we go so you can see in here my my crap ton here let's take a closer look in here uh aim camera the my my crap ton of batteries in there you see them all there there's like batteries on top there's no no actual um clipping happening or at least not much clipping you, you can see all the batteries that are there oh we got solar panels going now and there are all the solar panels so six of them and i need them to run that float experiment Okay, we're getting ready for yep and you can also see if we aim our camera back this way I put a bit of a docking hub here um, I don't like that I still only have the one point or the point six two five meter the docking uh, what do you call those the uh, docking bay juniors not super happy with that and then here I just have like a Christmas tree red and green lights uh, they're not on right now. Those are there for Bill to use at his discretion to put in other places around the station as he sees fit. Other than that, like, I don't know, not too much else going on here. Starting to burn in three, two, one. There it goes. And of course, we got ourselves a little tug on here too. So this will finish the circularization. We'll deorbit that, the rest of the booster, and then uh, that little tug will take it the rest of the way, and then we'll detach the tug. And oh, you know how this works. Also, some RCS thrusters just tucked up here um, that allow us to do the docking. Bill will get out there and remove them using Kerbal Attachment System when they're all done because once they're on, there's the other set there. Once they're on, we won't need these. Okay. And there is our orbit. And program has ended. Okay, we shall stage. And uh, let's get ready to set up our rendezvous. Just started a little earlier and went to half thrust. Okay, boom. Okay, let's do that. And we'll just do it by watching the close encounter indicators. Beautiful. All right. Rendezvous in 17 minutes. Now, okay, I do want to get this alignment looking right. I'm a little bit annoyed that I messed up a bit with setting up the solar panels. If I set them up right, it would have been easy to put this so they were vertical, but I did not, I don't think. Okay, so turn this this way. I'm coming in really slow, so it'll give me some time to really think about this. Okay. Well, maybe not. Maybe I didn't screw it up. No, I don't believe I did. 
Because I'm lining up nice with the target ball there. Those look good. Looking good, looking good, looking good. Yes, that does look good. Okay. See, I might rotate... Rotate the whole thing 180 degrees, and I'm looking actually at the pedals from the from the um, cargo bay. The storage fairing. That's really what it is. So you can get the pedals to match up too. All right, I really need to start thinking about what I'm doing here. So R, slow down a bit more. That there. might want to do, in fact I am going to do it, is I'm just going to aim the camera at the front. This will help me line this up. I think this is going to look pretty good. I think so. Nice docking hub here. Let's slow down even more. Of course, turning off the RCS never helps when it comes to docking, does it? really makes it easier when you this happens to be pointing the right way <laughs> that's just uh, luck on my part I got everything lined up very well one last check at this okay I'm gonna live with that the uber slow approach but I don't want to have to take this apart again I want it to look right the first time I think I'm gonna be well let's not jinx it <laughs> there we go everything's all lined up there on the nav ball and come on you beautiful okay let's see what do we have here how does this look how are those solar panels lined up? That's the main thing. I like it. I like it. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is detach the little tug. There is absolutely no need for its monopropellant. So let's get as much of this monopropellant aboard as we can. Okay, so that's going bye-bye back to the station. Oh, oh, look at that. Look at that. That just makes me happy. Now, what I want to do is where do we need lights? You know what? I'll just move a couple of these red and green ones. I think that's all I shall do. All right, so Bill, let's EVA you. Now, Bill, do you have a wrench with you? Do you have your trusty dusty wrench? You do not, Bill. Don't go anywhere without your wrench. Okay, let's let go here. Let's go a wrench hunting. Wrench is probably in a container around here somewhere. in this inventory wrench and we'll take one of these handholds with us too so it's not as beautiful as it would be in the VAB but I mean it's not, it ain't bad let's take these these uh, flashy ones off maybe we can find it we got a lot of lights and find another spot to put them can you reach this one way down here oh my god Ar Bill your arms are so long all right, now let's go in the station and see if we can not turn those on. So this should go toggle flash. Yep. 
Really, they should be interval, but I'm not going to get picky. Toggle flash. And they're going to be out of sync right now, but I know when you re-render the vessel, all the lights go back in sync. All the flashing goes back in sync again. They're pretty close to being in sync. Oh, I am very happy with this. Okay, let's see. I want to take off those RCS thrusters. There's around eight, there's eight of them. And we'll just stow them somewhere. You never know when they might come in handy. So we're going to grab this one. And we're going to grab this one. Notice, by the way, if I try to grab the Hitchhiker can, it says it's too heavy. But you actually can, if you EVA multiple Kerbals, grab and move around heavier objects. It just takes more Kerbals to do it, which I really like. I think that's really a clever way to do it. Let's see what else we can grab. Probably can grab that one. There we go. Okay, is that all of them now? I believe it is. Want everything to look nice and clean. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, we'll stick those in a container. Get Bill aboard. And then I think we're going to call it. So next episode, we'll bring up two more Kerbals in another craft. We'll get that float experiment starting. And to be honest, i got to look at other things that might be coming. Maybe another shot at the Kerpalo. I know that. I know the Kerpalo 2 is in the building queue. But in the meantime, I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time. Oh my gosh. <laughs>